Well, joining us now in another exclusive interview, CrowdStrike co-founder and CEO George Kurtz, whose stock is up nearly 200% in the past year. George, it's great to have you on. I do want to get your reaction to that commentary, especially just in the last couple of weeks. And we, we mentioned it before the break, the SEC's X account with a, a false Bitcoin ETF announcement, the, the compromised account we saw there. We saw deep fakes ahead of Bangladesh's recent, recent election. And even just in, in the last couple of weeks, the targeting of water utilities by Iran-backed hackers in this country. I mean, the world's becoming a more dangerous place. The cyber threats prove how borderless it is. What does that mean for CrowdStrike? What does it mean for cyber budgets, both on the government side and commercial side, in 2024? Well, I think what you're seeing and what you're hearing um, is really how critical cybersecurity is in every facet of our life. We've talked about this many times, been on the show many times, and it continues to resonate uh, day in day. If we think about our digital lives, if we think about our families, our kids, our workplace, our national security, it can't function without cybersecurity. It really is, uh, you know, a critical element to our society. And as I said before, it, it's come out of the uh, back room into the boardroom, and it's never been more critical than it is today. The role that AI is playing in this, uh, there, there's pros and cons to this. Pros being what AI can do to detect other AI-based uh, cyber threats, the cons being those threats themselves. I mean, in a day where you had Dark Trace positively pre-announcing results this morning, calling out AI as a contributor, what are you seeing? Well, we know AI is a foundational component for security. We've been doing it since I started the company. Uh, it was machine learning really in the early days. Now it's generative AI with Charlotte AI. And it is such a positive technology for being able to identify threats that have never been seen before and be able to stop the breaches, which, which is what we're focused on. On the flip side, certainly what it does is it allows the adversaries to democratize a lot of the bad things that they're doing. So if we think about um, some of the areas that uh, we've called out, dark AI, the ability to have a generative AI technology without guardrails, right, that allows the democratization of these sort of uh, esoteric te techniques to many of the folks who don't have these skills, you're going to see more and more cybercrime, and you're going to see it happen quicker and quicker than it's ever happened before. Uh, the competitive landscape, want to get your assessment of it, especially when it comes to one of the biggest players who's becoming bigger, Microsoft. Uh, your take on that and how you navigate that relationship. Well, they're certainly a big player, and, uh, you know, you always have to respect uh, Microsoft. At the end of the day, what are customers looking at when they're buying from CrowdStrike? They're looking for a company that's going to solve their problem, which is stopping the breach. They're looking to consolidate. They're looking to save money. They're looking to make things easier, and they're looking to get a positive outcome. From a CrowdStrike perspective, we don't do anything other than security. That is our job. Every day we wake up and we live and breathe security and keeping our customers safe. We're not building clouds and productivity applications and those sort of things. And really, you know, what we've seen is certainly a crisis in trust on the Microsoft side. And 48 new vulnerabilities that came out this week, uh, continual breaches into these vulnerabilities, and customers are just getting frustrated with that. And they're looking for church and state and not the fox guarding the hen house. And I think that's an area where we've been very successful. Uh, George, good to see you. So uh, the, the street is really believing in CrowdStrike to start the year. And some analysts, investors are trying to figure out how you're going to continue growing into this valuation. So I wonder about M&A. You haven't done a ton of acquisitions, but you just did do Bionic, which gives you some more uh, power around applications and APIs just a, a few months ago. Are you going to do more now in this environment? Well, we, we've always looked at the environment and really focused on can we get the best technology, the best people, and does it fit within our platform? Bionic acquisition, I think, is a great example. Great tech, great team. It fits well within our cloud security uh, stack and really gives us a leg up uh, across our competition. We, we have one of the largest cloud security businesses in the world, and we'll continue to add to that. I think coming into 2024, you've seen a lot of the 2021 money that was raised by the venture um, you know, the, 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 the companies that have venture money, and that's going to roll over at different valuations. So we certainly are going to look at the landscape and, uh, and be opportunistic where we can and where it makes sense.